So since leaving the GSB, I've been spending most of my time working on financial technology startups or fintech startups. Uh, first we did Elon and then Prosper, and most recently I've been working on, on uh, Ripple. Um, I have to say one of the things kind of looking back that uh, I sort of regret is getting a little bit too swept up in this sort of Silicon Valley fetish for disruption, um, which I have to say you know, works well with investors, it works well with the press, but it does seem a little uh, self-indulgent now, and especially with technology sort of being the conversation just about everywhere in the world, this you know, kind of disrupt disruption rant uh, seems almost Trump-like, you know, sort of, uh, you know, we're all super smart and you're all super dumb and we're pure and you guys are all corrupt and you guys have probably seen this one, you know, software is eating the world and believe me, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I always thought this is the kind of thing you say when you're drunk and not wearing pants, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we love Mark. Um, but really, we, we really need a big tent for technology and certainly we need a bigger tent for, for FinTech. Uh, there's so many people that we need to bring together if we're gonna have any impact you know, we gotta to bring together the regulators, we gotta to bring together the banks, the innovators, the consumer groups. If they don't all get along, we're, we're just gonna have no impact. So we think fin, you know, FinTech is more about uh, diplomacy than it is about disruption. So I've been trying to uh, think in terms of how do we just get on with building and stop being such a self-righteous disruptor. Um, and I think that's particularly important uh, with what's, I think, what's coming next. I do think that we're sort of in the final stages of, of globalization. Uh, and obviously globalization has gotten a bad rap uh, lately, rightly so. Um, but not because it's a bad thing, but rather it's an incomplete thing. There is something missing. And the way we like to think about it is, you know, just like you cannot have fire without fuel, oxygen, and heat, you really can't have effective globalization without interoperability in goods, data, and, and money. They all have to work together. And unfortunately, we only have interoperability in goods and data. We have networks of networks and those two things. We don't have a network of network when it comes to money. So globalization is sort of like a fire without fuel. It's sort of smoldering, but it's not this sort of bonfire of growth that we need. Uh, you know, and you think about how we got here, think about how shipping used to be uh, before the shipping container. So in the 1900s, for example, incredibly inefficient, very labor intensive, and it's because Goods were packaged differently everywhere, so they'd get to port, you'd have to sort of unpack them, ship them again, super inefficient, huge drain on global growth. And then along comes the shipping container, and now you had interoperability from ship to truck to train, port to port, country to country. Uh, this made things hugely more efficient. In the next 20 years after this came about, you had about a 700% increase in global trade. We all know the story with uh, data. Uh, the internet is basically a network of networks. Now you uh, have three billion people that are communicating without being on the same network. But that's not the case with money. Uh, money is not interoperable globally. Uh, so it takes days to move value from network to network. It costs the world about two, almost two trillion dollars to move that value, and it blocks access to billions of people all around the world. And among other things, that means even a wealthy European can't send 50 euros to the US without it all being chewed up in, in costs, let alone the 50 cents that an underbanked uh, citizen uh, needs to be able to send if they want to be part of the global economy, all two billion of them, let alone the hundredth of a cent that these new connected devices need to be able to send to other devices if they're really going to be full you know, economic actors, soon to be 50 billion of them very soon. But I think things are changing. Good stuff is coming. Uh, lots of new technologies are on the horizon. Uh, one of them that's exciting and that we're working with is blockchain technology. Uh, it's basically a decentralized money network. Obviously getting a lot of hype right now, too much hype. Um, very interesting technology. But at the end of the day, a blockchain is just a network. So it can never be that shipping container for value. It can never be that sort of network of network. But it has already led to second-gen technologies, uh, things like the interledger protocol, which really can be that sort of internet of value, can be that sort of uh, money network uh, of networks. And what that means simply is that now you can have value moving network to network across countries instantly, basically for free, and anybody would have access to this. So no one party can block access to an internet of value 
any more than one party can block access to the internet globally. And so what that means is now we have all the components of globalization that are working together. We have a, 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 a grand network of networks, if you will, between data, money, uh, and goods. And that does mean that those two billion underbank now are full, can be full economic citizens. Uh, they can be customers of European, Chinese, and American companies. That means those billions of things now can be full economic actors. So you could argue the world is not just a world of seven, you know, uh, the world economy is not a world of seven billion, but maybe trillions of, of things and people buying, selling, and paying taxes. So good stuff's coming, but I think we have to stop being sort of these self-righteous disruptors here in Silicon Valley and really focus on building stuff. And importantly, don't give up on globalization. It is a really, really good thing. It, it is just not complete. Thank you so much. <laughs>